Band Company, and Corey Dissinger, who is on Blue Green Crush. Uh, so I'm excited to, again, see Corey on camera here with, oh, his, with this his is, sweet deck. This guy's my man. Uh, this is going to be basically the litmus test for the deck. He's 10-1, and one, so I have to imagine that he has thrashed a plenty Bant Company uh, opponents so far. Let's take a look and see how he does. One thing I do want to note is I love the names that people put for their own decks on their deck list. So Corey refers to his deck as My Tentacle Romance, like we pointed <laughs> out before, which is cool. But Andrew has called his Bant Company deck Patron Warrior, which is uh, pretty... Uh, Pretty uh, analogous mm -hmm. to uh, Patron Warrior was just like the best deck in uh, Hearthstone for quite a while. And so, okay. you know, calling Band Company Patron Warrior is pretty accurate. So Andrew's going to lead off here uh, with a Duskwatch Recruiter, and Corey has that Noose Constrictor. So that is a, a, a card that kind of explains this deck. It's just this yeah, giant, just giant snake that is just twisting around you over the, <laughs> the few turns. Yeah, this deck is And then it starts to squeeze, and it's just over. Yeah. News Constrictor does a lot of good defense here, though, because it's going to be able to protect uh, Corey from flyers like uh, Selfless Spirit and Spell Queller. It also makes any Dromokas commands that Andrew would want to fire off a lot more awkward, because Corey essentially has the opportunity to pseudo force of will them by discarding two cards to make his News Constrictor a 4 4. Oh, Andrew is going to play an Evolving Wilds, use it to find a Plains and pass the turn, transforming his Duskwatch Recruiter into a Kralen Horde Howler on Corey's upkeep. Corey just has a copy of Jace Rinse Prodigy. He's just going to pass the turn back. News Constrictor is going to stay home and do what it does best, defend the ground and the skies. It's a yeah. big old snake. And Andrew had a two drop, which was great, but he did not have a turn three play, which is a little... A little unfortunate. It would have nice to see another two drop or a Jermokas command there. And we've been seeing this a lot with the band company decks where people are playing, uh, like, they don't have two spells on turns two and three. They, they only have one um, total. And I have to imagine that that might be an error in either deck building or mulliganing. All right, so we have Andrew is going to attack in with his uh, Kralen Horde Howler to three points of damage and knock Corey down to 17. He has an Expedition, which looks like it's a Canopy Vista, but we will get clarification on that. And he's just going to play a Thalia Heretic Athar on the cheap, only costing two mana because of that Crown Horde Howler. Corey's going to draw a card for his turn, and let's see what he can cobble together here with the Jace and Noose Constrictor on the battlefield. And if this was a post-board game, Corey might be worried about something like Negate or Clash of Wills, but considering it's uh, game one... Oh, he can do Spell Queller, of course. All right, so we have a Kiora, Master of the Depths. is going to be countered by Spell Queller. Again, on the cheap, only two mana from that Kralen Horde Howler. And so so mi mi missing that play on turn three really gets catching, caught up yeah. on turn four by playing two spells. is just the power of Duskwatch Recruiter. That card is real good. Yeah, it is. Duskwatch Recruiter is great. And uh, this is definitely what Andrew wants. You know, he's if we, we can just disclude uh, turn one, but... On his first four turns of the game, he had three spells, which is exactly where you want to be. Right, so on Andrew's fifth turn, he's just going to send all of his creatures into the red zone. Spell Queller, Kralen Horde Howler, and a Thalia Heretic Athar. He has four mana sitting back, and this, which threatens a lot. Yeah, and this screams Dromoka's Command, because if Corey blocks the Spell Queller and tries to discard a uh, card to pump it up, uh, Andrew can pull some powerful shenanigans with Tremoka's command. He has the option to just put a plus one plus one counter on the Spell Queller and have his Howler fight the Jace. And then Corey would need to discard another card, um, but would most certainly lose his uh, Jace. But in, uh, because of the Howler, Andrew also has the option to play this Archangel Avacyn, making all of his creatures indestructible. So Andrew is going to play that Archangel Avacyn. It is on the cheap from the Crown Horde Howler. It will make his creatures indestructible. Spellcaller will live through combat, and Corey's going to take six points of damage and fall down to 11. And this is what makes Avacyn so good, is that coming to play indestructible trigger, it is a, an effect that is worth real card advantage. Uh, we can see here that Avacyn allowed Andrew to attack for a bunch of damage, and then also force Corey to discard a card. In this case, it was a Den Protector which is a you know, pretty nice thing to just snipe out of your opponent's hand. All right, so Andrew will use an Evolving Wilds to go find an island. Corey's going to loot with Jace, discarding the Evolving Wilds himself. 
And Andrew will pass the turn. Corey has a Kiora. And Kiora ends up being one of the primary card draw engines in uh, Corey's deck. Uh, being His deck is all lands and creatures, uh, so it has a pretty high probability to hit. And because he has four, a bunch of den protectors, if he does put a spell into his graveyard, he's likely going to be able to get it back. And it, this also just plays so well with flipping Jace. Yeah, so he's going to get an Ishkana and a land from the Kiora minus two. He's going to transform his Jace. And he will be able to use this to shrink one of Andrew's creatures. But he also could have just saved the Jace to block and transform. That does make it make it risky as there's a potential Dramokas command. But this Jace also uh, being transformed can soak up some damage potentially and get Cory to a point where he can start surging Crush of Tentacles, which is really what he wants to be at. Yeah, Andrew has had a, a pretty good draw. You know, I was kind of bemoaning that he didn't have a turn three play, but because he had two turn four plays, uh, and then on top of it, this Avacyn that allowed him to push some extra damage means that Andrew really has Corey on the ropes, and Corey needs to have something big to catch back up. We really need to see a surge crush of tentacles on the following turn. Well, it looks like he has Crush and Oath of Nyssa in his hand, so... If he has a land next turn, he will be able to do just that. That'll be perfect. And even if he doesn't have a land, he's got all these one ofs. One of the one ofs he has is a uh, hangerback walker. So he can technically even surge Crush of Tentacles when he only has five mana. All right. So it looks like the Jace Plus has targeted Thalia, so it is a one two. And now it's also interesting to note that Corey's sixth land to make all this work does need to be a basic land so that it enters the battlefield untapped because of that Thalia. Yeah, and with this Lumbering Falls, uh, Corey's in a pretty dire scenario. Do we have a lethal attack here, even, if we th even through the blocker? If uh, With the Lumbering Falls? Well... I think what I think what Andrew's going to do here is push as much damage as he can and then use the Dramokas command to potentially flip his Abyssin uh, to try to finish him off. Because Corey's blocking the Abyssin with the Noose Constrictor, that's not going to work out. But if Corey had decided to block something else, Andrew would have had that as an, as an option. If Andrew had a, a seventh land, he would be able to cast Dramoka's Command and Lumbering Falls, and that would be devastating. But this this might actually end up being really nice for Corey if he can live through this turn, uh, because this Crush of Tentacles will leave behind an 8-8, but he's also going to get a Kiora out of the whole ordeal because there's one under that Spell Queller. Yeah, well, he already has a Kiora, so they're going to Legend rule each other, which is a little annoying. Crush, crush bounces everything back. Oh, yeah, that's right. You're absolutely right. Um, yeah, it's not just creatures, it's all non-land permanents. The one thing that's a little dicey for Cory, though, is this Archangel Abyssin is going to be pretty annoying because if Cory bounces all non-land permanents uh, back to their owner's hand, if Andrew just has five mana open, he can just replay the Abyssin mm -hmm. uh, and potentially untap and attack or kill Cory with it. So Cory's pretty incentivized to try to kill this... Uh, well, he is, going, right he is going to discard two cards. It looked like an Ishkana and something else. So his hand currently is Oath of Nyssa and uh, Crush of Tentacles. So he'll have hit the top card that he can look at. He can minus the current Kiora to try and find another untapped land. And the Oath of Nyssa to find an untapped land. Yeah, and the Lumbering Falls is actually going to be problematic too. I think even with a Crush of Tentacles... Corey's going to need uh, some more help. He might actually not even be able to afford playing Crush of Tentacles here. As it stands now, he's going to be going down to um, four. Uh, so this is after first strike damage is resolved. So he's taken one point of damage from the Thalia. 
So he's going to be taking five more damage from the other creatures and go down to five. What I would like to see Andrew do here is put a, a plus one, plus one counter on uh, one of his creatures to knock, make it so that Corey took seven damage, putting Corey down to three, and then Lumbering Falls would be a lethal attacker. All right, so News Constrictor is going to trade with Avacyn. Andrew is going to play a Duskwatch Recruiter and pass the turn. So I believe Corey took six damage and should be at four. Uh, the first strike damage already happened, and then... Oh, I understand. And then the okay. five points. So I was just working with the wrong life total for that whole <laughs> combat step. <laughs> okay, well. All right, well, Corey did pick up an untapped land here, so... The beauty of live television. So let's see how he decides to do this turn. So he's going to minus his Kiora. Find some more stuff. Well, there's the Den Protector. And this is a big deal. The, uh, now that I have a, a better assessment of what the life total was, I actually would have liked to have seen uh, Andrew just not attack with his Abyssin because it's such a powerful threat in the face of Crush Up Tentacles. So it looks like Andrew is going to take the Yavimaya Coast and he's thinking about the Noose Constrictor. That's what he's going to take. When you see an Oath of Nyssa. Ooh, there's another crush, so that's going to go on the bottom. Yeah, but he gets a basic land, so he's going to be able to surge a crush this turn. He could even, uh, I think there's one in his graveyard that he could flash back. And so he's just going to play the crush from hand. I, I think that I, that I would have preferred to... Surge the one from the graveyard? Surge the one. But, uh, you know what, I'm, I'm not sure if you can surge it if you target it with Jace, though. Yeah, I've, I don't know. I think I think Jace gives it flashback, and so it, when it has flashback, you can't play alternate costs. I know that much. Got it. We'll have to double check the wording on Jace to see if it allows you to play from the graveyard or just flashback. Yeah. So if Andrew didn't have, or if Andrew had a an Archangel Avacyn and all of his mana open, he really wouldn't have to worry about this Crush of Tentacles too much. Um, but instead, as is, all it all he can really do is. Um, you know, activate his Duskwatch Recruiter, draw an extra card, but he doesn't really get to do anything else on the board. If you could find a Reflector Mage, that would be nice because you'd be able to bounce that 8-8 eight eight token. Um, but this is going to be kind of tough for Andrew okay. without some sort of flash flyer. So the, the wording on Jace, you are able to actually play, pay the surge cost, so he could have flashed the one back in his graveyard. Uh, and I don't know if I'm a big fan of uh, activating uh, Duskwatch Recruiter there. I think I would have rather just left that mana up and flashed in the Spell Queller on Corey's end step. Yeah, you'd be able to kill the uh, Kiora. Yeah, Flash Flyers are, are really the best thing in this matchup for the bank company side. All right, so Crush of Tentacles has stabilized the board for Corey. Yep. Let's see what Andrew can put together. And now this is going to be really tough for Andrew from this point because Corey's going to be able to operate with more and more mana and just get more stuff online, and he can keep crushing if he needs to. Uh, he can start, as, as soon as he gets 10 mana, which this deck will do, uh, he can start looping Crush of Tentacles with Den Protector just over and over and over again. And so Sylvan Advocate's going to come down for Andrew. It is souped up now, so it's a 4-5. Still a pretty puny creature, though, in the face of an 8-8. Before, Andrew was facing uh, no opposition on the board, but this 8-8 is quite the adversary. And there is Athalia. And Andrew can, he's even free to attack with this 8-8 because he can untap it with Kiora if he wants to deploy some more blockers. Yeah. Although, although the blockers under the battlefield tapped, but he can untap them with Kiora. Yeah, I think that's the more likely thing to do. Corey, Corey's going to have an easy time winning this game so long as it goes uh, to a later stage. So all he wants to do is just do everything he can to preserve his life and just gum up the board, generate a lot more uh, value, hit some land drops, and he's going to be, be golden if he can make it to the end game. So let's see how Corey decides to navigate this turn. 
He has a Kiora that he can use. He has that 8-8, decide if he wants to attack with it or not. Mm -hmm. so this is a little tricky because the, uh, the Lumbering Falls is a lethal attacker. All of Corey's blockers are going to come into play tapped. And if Andrew uh, has something like a Reflector Mage, uh, that Octopus may disappear. Uh, so he's not going to untap the Jace. He's just going to untap two lands. And I think I would have liked to have seen just another creature untap just to play things safe and make it as punishing as possible for Andrew to attack because uh, as it stands now, all Andrew really needs is a, is a Reflector Mage. Yeah, if he's, if he's not going to use that last untapped mana, um, I don't see the benefit to untapping the land as opposed to untapping the Jace. Mm -hmm. Something like Reflector Mage from Oka's Command just ends the game. Yeah, and here Andrew has enough mana to uh, activate Lumbering Falls, attack with it, and cast Dramoka's Command. So the fact that News Constrictor can just have cards discarded to it to get bigger means that Dramoka's Command is not actually uh, that effective of a, a removal spell. But if Andrew attacked and Corey decided to block, let's say, the Lumbering Falls and the Thalia, and let the Sylvan Advocate go through, Andrew would be able to punk him out of the game with that Dramoka's command, putting a plus one, plus one counter on the Sylvan Advocate and making it a five power yeah. attacker. So it looks like what he's going to try to do. Yeah, this is a, a real enticing kill, kill Thalia attack step since it makes things much easier for Corey. Yeah, because Thalia is like pretty problematic. It looks like we're going to get a Dramokas command first. So if you make the Lumbering Falls a 6-6, six, six, I think Corey has to discard his whole hand. Um, and that will make it so the Noose Constrictor just trades with the Lumbering Falls. Andrew won't have any attacks, but he will wipe out Corey's entire hand. Mm -hmm. uh, while this is a good trade in terms of uh, you know, card advantage, I don't know really if it's the best option because Corey can just regenerate that card advantage quite quickly. Yeah, with Kiora can draw two. Jace is going to flip, allow him to surge. Yeah, if he had attacked with all three, he probably could have still made that play, uh, but at least pushed some damage through. Well, he's not going to be able to search here unless he finds a spell to play. Oh, and he does. So he gets a Den Protector. So he can face down the Den Protector here and flash back. Ooh, and there's Pulse of Parasa. Corey does have a few ways to gain life. Pulse of Parasa is going to help buffer his life total. And this is, uh, you know, one of the difficulties about facing this green-blue crush deck is it's so, you can get it so low, but then it bounces back so quickly once it starts getting all of its mana online. It's so good at seeing a large amount of cards, uh, and uh, it can also gain life. And with Pulse of Marasa, it can even recur it with Den Protector or just flash it back with Jace so that he's always going to find one, always have access to it, and if he needs to reuse it, he might even be able to do so. Yeah, so Pulse of Marasa is going to be flashed back by Jace. He'll gain six life, get a basic land that he'll be able to play, and then face down his Den Protector. Man, this Crush deck is real sweet to watch operate. It looks like Corey has put in thousands of hours playing with this deck, to be completely honest. Yeah, you know, like, this is just such a great story the more that I hear about it, because we heard that this is a, a deck that Corey actually had been playing a ton all through the previous season, but it just never had exactly what it needed. And then one of the big cards that seems like helps take it over the top is Emrakul, the Promise Den. It just makes it so that it can get to the, the mid-late game, and no matter what your opponent has, you can trump it. All right, so here's a Duskwatch Recruiter for Andrew. He's just going to pass the turn back. Dent Protector is going to get turned face up. That's going to get back 
A crush of tentacles, likely. No, just another pulse of Marasa. Which will allow him to get back another Den Protector, gain some more life, and continue the loop going. Yeah, and this will just uh, do so much for Cory. And once he's played out all of his Den Protectors, he can crush up tentacles, return them all to his hand, and cast them all over again if he wants. He's also even able to attack here with his uh, Octopus if he wants, because he's going to plus the Kiora. Yeah, the 8-8 eight eight is no joke, you know. I know when I first looked at the spoiler, I saw Crush of Tentacles, and I was like, wow, this is a, a cool card that's going to be great and limited, but I'll never play it in, in standard. Ooh. But um, Pulse is going to get hit by that Spell Queller. That's not even that bad, though, because as soon as Corey casts a Crush of Tentacles, it, that Pulse of Mirage is just going to get cast at that point. Mm, that Spell Queller is going to be able to uh, attack Jason, make it so that he won't be able to get back... Uh, to, to replay Crush of Tentacles, though. Yeah, he could also just kill the Cure. The, the Flash Flyers for Andrew are, are his best threats in the matchup by far. What goes on on the ground loses its value uh, as we get into the mid-game. Yeah. It's been pretty crazy, too. Andrew hasn't seen a... Uh, Reflector Mage or a Collected Company to help find a Reflector Mage. Reflector Mage does a pretty good job of keeping tabs on the Octopus tokens. Well, Dramoka's command is going to put a counter on the Spell Queller and it's going to fight off the Den Protector. And now it can kill the Jace, which is a pretty big deal. Yeah, I think that I would have played the spell before I plus the Jace. That way the yeah. Jace could have at least helped protect itself. Yep. Also, we knew about the Spell Queller, so maybe, maybe it would have been better just to just flat out get Crush of Tentacles there. Mm -hmm. He has milled over a handful of them with that Kiora. And to attack Jace. And now and that, that this will kill Jace. Jace is dead, Corey's, uh he's got this 8-8, eight eight, but it, he doesn't actually have that much more going on. Uh, hopefully this uh, Kiora can find some good piece of action for him. Kiora is going to minus. Well, there's a Dent Protector. Yeah, Dent Protector is good. So unfortunately, he only gets one card. He can get one land and one creature. Uh, his deck is mostly lands and creatures, so it's usually going to hit. But in this case, he only gets a Dent Protector, which is going to be able to do some good work. And he's one land short of being able to Dent Protector back a Crush and use it. Ooh, and Andrew, Ooh, has, and Andrew another has another spell queller. spell queller. So now things are looking bad for Corey. This game has swung back around. Andrew has been able to... Uh, he uh, couldn't make much headway on Corey's life total, but he found some good places to attack Corey's sources of card advantage, and now Corey is out of sources of card advantage and could lose to this growing board on Andrew's side. So Andrew's just going to draw for his turn. Looks like it's another copy of Archangel Avison, which is pretty big game. All right, Andrew is just going to attack with all of his creatures. And if I were Andrew, I think I would actually prefer not to play my Avison uh, because this is going to be seven damage, putting Corey down to four. And then even if Corey plays a uh, Crush of Tentacles, you can just cast the Avacyn end of turn, and it will just be a lethal attacker uh, right away. I think, I think that is what Andrew is contemplating right now. Mm -hmm. He gets to save his Thalia if he does it now, but his odds of winning through a Crush of Tentacles are so much higher if he if he doesn't cast the Avacyn now. And this is a tough thing to do. You know, you get so attached to your resources, especially Thalia. It's one of the flashy new cards. So good, good on Andrew to just say, I can just let that go. I don't need that resource anymore. Um, and this... 
All right, well, he is going to get an activation of Dusk Duskwatch Recruiter on Corey's upkeep with the Transform Trigger on the stack. And what's nice about this is it's going to mean that... Oh, no, he's not going to. Okay, never mind. I was going to say what's nice about that is Corey can... Um, like, Andrew will have enough mana to cast uh, Avacyn with the Duskwatch Recruiter turning into the Crowlin Horde Howl Howler because it'll reduce Avis's mana cost. But if Corey has some way to kill the Howler and then crush, uh, Andrew's going to be unable to cast the Avis in any meaningful way. Mm -hmm. All right, well, Corey is going to find Anissa. Vast would see her. He will play it. He's going to get a land and be able to transform that Nissa. And he's going to get some redraws, but he needs something real good. Uh, he, he needs... Oh, it's a Traverse. Oh, wow. That's going to turn into an Emrakul, potentially. Can he cast it? He has he seven. Has seven mana. Does, it, does he have six card types? He has the Hanger Back Walker in his hand. He can play for zero. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, uh, Andrew played his turn to be safe against almost anything Corey could do. But there's, there's nothing he can do against Emrakul. How many card types? We have instant, sorcery, land, creature, planeswalker, artifact is six. And and what's great about this is Corey's going to be able to cast Seven. Emrakul. He's going to be able to make Andrew attack the 3-4 spell queller into the Emrakul, putting... Getting back Pulse of Marasa. Yeah, Pulse of Marasa getting put back on the stack, which is going to buffer Corey's life total. Get a Den Protector. Yeah, get 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 a Den Protector, get a Jace, get, get anything that's a good source of card advantage. And Andrew, seeing that line of play, is just going to scoop it up. <laughs> Emrakul, the promised end, ladies and gentlemen, is going to get Corey out of this one. He is going to take the first game against Andrew Burke on Band Company. This is just awesome. Let's take a look at the sideboards. Andrew, he has two, Arrog two Tragic Arrogance, three Lamholt Pacifist, a Tireless Tracker, two Negate, two Ojatai's Command, two Nissa Vastwood Seer, two Declaration in Stone, and one Planar Outburst. How do we think he's going to sideboard here against the Crush deck? Oh, that game was unreal. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I think that he's going to be bringing in the Negates just to fight all the shenanigans. He may want uh, Nissa Vastwood Seer just so that he... Uh, has a little bit more card advantage. It's kind of good against Crush of Tentacles, bouncing everything back and forth. Um, Ojatai's Command is also a good way to counter some of Corey's sources of card advantage. Uh, outside of those cards, I don't think he'll want anything. He could bring in the Tireless Tracker, um, depending on if he feels like he has room. Uh, but uh, mostly, I think it's going to be those counter spells that are going to do some good things for him in the matchup. All right. Now on Corey's side, we have a World Breaker, an Ishkana Graft Widow, one Summary Dismissal, four Death Mist Raptor, one Void Shatter, two Cla or one Clash of Wills, two Negate, two Aerial Volley, and two Gnarlwood Triad. How do we think Corey's going to sideboard? You know, we've we've gotten a chance to watch this uh, deck a few more times. I think what Corey's going to be bringing in uh, are the Ishkana, just because it plays such good defense, and then the Aerial Volleys, just to tag those uh, Spell Quellers. He has uh, some other decent options, like Death Miss Raptor can do some okay work in the matchup. World Breaker can do some okay work in the matchup. So can Gnarl Dryad. But the, the cards that I would expect him to bring in are just the Ishkanas and the Aerial Volleys. I think the other cards are okay, but not great. And he doesn't want to water down his game plan too much. Oh, I can believe that. Now, for those of you watching this, I know I am going to want to go back and watch this, watch that game one, because that was awesome. Yeah. You can find that on the YouTube channel. So for the SCG Live YouTube channel, so youtube.com slash StarCityGames, that's where all the Versus series get posted, premium archives, the SCG Tour archives, so you can go back and watch Corey Dissinger slice and dice his way through this field, unboxings, and much more. Yours truly even has a few unboxings on there that you can check out. YouTube.com slash StarCityGames, absolutely free. Check out those archives. Man, so, that game was just so sweet. That was just awesome. Uh, you know, I really, it was so back and forth. Andrew was ahead in the middle of the game, and then Corey looked like he had basically stabilized his one and was going to just do his thing, basically. But then Andrew was able to have, uh, you know, instead of attacking Corey's life total, he started attacking Corey's sources of card advantage, making really good use of the spell quellers being a flash 
a flying threat. And then, uh, and Andrew had things lined up perfectly, you know, on that last turn. He didn't cast his Avacyn to protect his Thalia, which I thought was a great move, because that meant that he would kill Cory even through a Crush of Tentacles. But then Cory, you know, he's got, he's got a one of for every situation. And in that situation, uh, you know, he got his one of Emrakul, and he could just barely cast it. He used all of his mana. He had to discard Hangerback Walker in order to get Delirium. And it was relevant that he could discard, hang or cast, excuse me, cast Hangerback Walker for zero because he didn't have the mana, you know, to cast it. He needed it directly in his graveyard. So uh, just a, a really great back and forth game with a lot of interesting decision points. All right, well, as we head into game two here, Andrew Burke is going to be on the play. It looks like he's going to go down to six, so we have a little bit more time while the players shuffle. I do want to point out, and I've been thinking about this ever since we first had Corey on camera, so this particular deck, uh, it's, you know, it reminds me of an Ally and Trousy deck because it's like a big Simic deck, mm -hmm. but this actually seems like a deck that David McDarby would play. Sure. And Corey just looks like a David McDarby doppelganger. <laughs> Our, you know, that past... Have you, pa have you past ever seen past, them? Vers past versus Commander star David McDarby, who, who now works at Wizards, so he's not able to play in these events. But, uh, you know, Corey Dissinger, I, I've never seen him in the same room with David McDarby before. Hmm. So Suspicious. I wonder if his actual name is Mavid McDarby. <laughs> Mavid? I don't <laughs> get it. <laughs> That's just the first initial from his last name. Oh, okay, got it. <laughs> Instead. But yeah, man, I've been really impressed with this Crush deck. I'm excited to see just what he's able to do in this tournament. Andrew's going to keep his opening six. Let's see if he can put on enough pressure before those tentacles start crushing down on him. Yeah, I am too. And we see a lot of people's discard and counter spells in their sideboard. So uh, playing a deck where you're getting most of your leverage from some big, powerful spell like Crush of Tentacles, makes a lot of sense to me. Granted, the sideboard games are going to get a little bit more difficult because people do have Transgress the Mines and the Gates floating around in the sideboard, but we really don't see just good main deck uh, discard or counter spells outside of you know some Ojitai's commands. All right, well, Andrew did not have a turn two play. Corey was able to play a Noose Constrictor on his turn two. Andrew fires back with the Reflector Mage to bounce it. Uh, but Corey has a Nissus Pilgrimage, which is going to speed up his speed up crush time by a turn, which seems very nice. Yeah, the other thing about this that's good for Andrew, though, is if Corey does play Crush of Tentacles, Andrew will essentially always be able to just recast that Reflector Mage, get that Octopus token out of there. So that's going to be some very valuable counterplay that Andrew has access to. Corey will probably look to. Uh, kill or trade with that Reflector Mage if he can get the opportunity to. And I would expect Andrew to always try to make it so that he has access to at least one Reflector Mage post Crush of Tentacles. All right, so Corey is just going to play a Forest and pass the turn back. So he's not going to redeploy that Noose Constrictor. It would have entered the battlefield tapped anyways. He is likely just going to use that Blighted Woodland on Andrew's end step to get some more basics. Andrew's going to attack with his creatures. Uh, going to knock Cory down to 13. Thalia, Heretic, Cathar, and Reflector Mage dealing 5 damage. I'm just going to pass the turn, leaving 3 mana up. Yeah, and it looks like he's having some mana problems. He hasn't hit uh, his, his fourth land drop for quite a while. So he has a, a little bit of a clock, which is good. But Cory's really accelerating into the, the mid and late game with these ramp spells. So Blighted Woodland is going to go get a couple more basics for Cory, And this is the turn he can start crushing if he so desires. And if he has a Dem Protector and he's worried about um, a Negate, it's probably worth it for him to just crush and then Dem Protector it back later. Right, well, there is the Noose Constrictor and a Crush of Tentacles with the Surge cost. And what's great about this line of play is... If Andrew has a negate, at least he's, you know, got a creature on the board, uh, so it's, he's developed a little bit. If Andrew had Spell Queller, he'd crush of tentacles back the Spell Queller, and the News Constrictor would then come back into play. Uh, and Andrew, seeing the possibility of that play, saved his Spell Queller until post-crush. So really good job on Andrew. You can see he's adapting to this new green-blue crush deck. 
So a spell queller will come down on Corey's end step. Uh, it's going to attack Corey down to 11. We're going to see a reflector mage. It's going to take care of that 8-8 uh, octopus token. And here Corey's going to play a Nissa Vastwood Seer on his turn. That's going to go get a forest. And he'll, uh, I he'll would be able to play that to transform, and he still has five mana available to crush if he needs to. Yeah, I like the idea of just playing the the Nissa, drawing a card off of it, and then just crushing again. Um, but it looks like he's got a lot of stuff to actually to do this turn. Yes, looks like he's just going to make a four four, and then also play a Jace and a Noose Constrictor. So the shields are up. Andrew needs an answer to this Noose Constrictor if he wants to be able to attack this uh, Nissa. So this is going to force Andrew to do something. Uh, Jermoka's command is going to be a little awkward. Uh, he really wants uh, another Reflector Mage. Or maybe even a fourth land to collect a company. Mm -hmm. Now, if for some reason Corey only has one land in hand, uh, and I haven't gotten a good look, but he might be running low on cards, Andrew can actually Jermoka's command this Noose Constrictor with his spell card, because if Corey only has one card in his hand, He's only going to be able to make the new constrictor 3-3. Uh, three, three. Oh, he's got four. <laughs> yeah. All right, so Spell Queller is going to get a counter. He's going to kill off the Jace. And this is a good move. Andrew wants to try to cut Corey off of his sources of card advantage. He can't deal with the Nissa, but he might as well deal with the Jace. All right, well, Nissa is going to plus and uh, get a Pulse of Marasa. And this is Pilgrimage, which Corey is likely to cast here. Uh, it looks like he has Spell Mastery, so he's going to get a bunch of forests. We are, we are getting into Find Emrakul and Cast It time, yeah. and Andrew only has three lands. And this is, this is uh, just one of the best ways to get ahead. It's obviously extremely polarized because Andrew is missing land drops. But not only is he missing land drops, but Corey it has these ramp spells that are not only sources of extra mana per turn, but also extra um, sources of cards. So you can really see that Corey's engine is just firing on all cylinders. This news, constri news constrictor in this deck has been real impressive. It is. Especially in this Bank Company matchup. Yep. Yeah, I think news constrictor, if you're playing a green deck, traditionally the easiest way for you to die is to just flyers. Uh, News Constrictor does a lot of work it, to ensure that you have a relatively low curve and you can defend against you know, those flying assaults. Right. Well, Andrew does finally find a fourth land, and on his end step, Corey is, Cor Cor is going to turn up that Den Protector and get back Crush of Tentacles. Nissa is going to plus and find Emrakul, the Promised End. And this is just an embarrassment of resources. Corey has, you know, fistful... Well, Emer oh Emrakul's going to be cast. Andrew might have Ojitai's command. We're going to find out. What's Andrew like, going to do? Like, like I've said time and time again, the end is promised. You get a turn of reprieve so you can die with dignity. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> All right, on, his end on Corey's end step, let's see what Andrew decides to do. Maybe collected company? I guess he could reflect or mage the Emrakul back. Yeah, Corey just has tons of cards, tons of mana. He can draw two cards a turn, and he's just got sp insane spells like Emrakul that Andrew just can't deal with. Right, so here is a collected company on Corey's end step. So Andrew will get a turn uh, here that Corey will control, and then Andrew will get an extra turn after that. He's looking for a Reflector Mage to get that Emrakul off the battlefield. Uh, and this is a matchup where Andrew really needs to be a bit more aggressive. We saw in this game he had mana problems. In the game before, uh, he didn't have a three drop. I think that uh, some of these company players are kind of making a mistake in their deck building, not having enough two drops. Uh, Andrew Burke only has 11, which is pretty common among the decks we see. But every time I see that I'm on camera, the problem that they have is that they're just not curving out perfectly or that they're missing land drops. And having access to more two drops is gonna help with uh, both of those problems. All right, so Andrew is gonna find Tireless Tracker and Selfless Spirit. Uh, he's going to draw for his turn. He does not have a fifth land. It looks like we have two Sylvan Advocates, a Spell Queller, a Thalia, uh, a Duskwatch Recruiter, and I'm not able to see what the top card is because of the glare. 
And it's white. It's a white card. All right. <laughs> well, Andrew is going to send in with Spell Queller, Reflector Mage, and Tireless Tracker. We're going to put Emrakul on Spell Queller, News Constrictor on Reflector Mage, discarding a card to make it a 3 3. Ashaya is going to block the. The and tireless then, tracker, and, and so that's going to take care of all of those creatures. Post combat, Corey can just sacrifice, you know, the selfless spirit. He will sack the selfless spirit. It's going to make Andrew take a point of damage from the uh, Yavamaya coast. Might as well. And now Andrew is going to get again that turn of reprieve. Have fun, good luck, my friend. He's got an Avacyn. He can. Does only have four lands, and he is going to extend the hand. Corey Dissinger is going to win this match. Blue Green Crush over Bant Company, moving on to eleven and one. Emrakul, the promised end. And, and Corey it really is, it, it is, is the, exactly what it says on the card. Yeah, Corey really is the Batman of this tournament too, <laughs> beating up on the evil Bant <laughs> Company players, and you know, giving us maybe not the deck we deserve, but the deck we need. Yeah, he 